Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Alms Podcast. This is episode 16. That's crazy. I've already made 16 episodes. But then again, they're only 5 to 10 minutes, so it doesn't necessarily shock me. Which, by the way, on that note, a lot of these videos are going to be cut down a little bit more shorter. I think relatively around the 5 minute mark is going to be suffice, but if it goes over it, it's going to turn into a part 2 most likely just things for future consideration all right so tonight i feel like my thoughts are pretty fluent so i wanted to record an episode this episode has to do with the authenticity of faith and really the objective well i should say objectively thinking about faith it came to my realization over the past couple months a lot of things i was thinking about religion so to speak were in my head about what i think about religion and not what actually is about religion and the same believe it or not came with thinking about other topics like everyday life why does this happen to this person why does this happen to this person or how about why does politics like this or why does it look like this nation is in chaos is the nation truly in chaos or is the nation getting better are we going to be on the world forever Or is the world really fading away? Who really knows? These are questions that we have to sort of address. And if we want to, we can go to the Bible and gain wisdom as a Christian and try to increase our Christianese lens on the world, which there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, for me, I come at odds with fighting these thoughts. And I don't know about you guys, but I almost go and just produce something without even thinking about it twice what i mean produce is maybe it's a podcast or maybe i'm going in conversation or in dialogue with somebody and it's like if i just learn a subject i hardly doubt i'm an expert about it so why do i just jump into it right away so maybe there's going to be a little bit of a shift or a lean in this podcast not a huge one but just for me and my own sanity Day to day, I'm going to try to live objectively in the sense that I want to start to see things for how they really are as opposed to what I think they are. And because there's not really a way to measure all things as they really are, well, my point is sort of made. In all dialogue or in all things consideration, why not approach everything we talk about with somebody as though we're a child, right? I think Christ said to be like a kid. Now, there's a lot of theory as to why this is, but for me, strictly speaking, whether it's the psychological studies that I've looked at that pertain to the brain, curiosity has been a blessing in my life. People look at me and they say, you seem very driven to talk about Jesus or to talk about God or to talk about faith. And I guess it's just an open sense of curiosity. I never let my mind become closed. I always like to keep an open mind. I always like to pertain to other things that are out there or even listen. And I find that when we don't listen to other people and we instead shut them out, we're actually acting off of a sort of presumptive bias that whenever somebody talks, if we're not fully listening to them or hearing out their opinion, it's because we're blocking out with our own bias or what we're trying to think. So why not think of this this way? Your brain is a clean slate each morning. Absorb the ideas. Consider them. Let them accumulate. Then disregard the ones that you know are not going to serve you purpose. Why? Because it's like process of elimination on a day-to-day basis. Which things have served you purpose, which things don't. With that being said, observe wisely your actions, your thoughts, your ideas. Realize that although the world seems like it's built off of logic, you are not even actually born with logic, but rather emotion. So there's this 50-50, just like nature and nurture, this idea of logic and emotion. All of our lives are filled with not only logic, but emotion. If we could effectively go to the library, pick up a book, try to learn something about any given topic, you'd think everybody would be an expert on it. But what happens when I walk into a room knowing the things I know, but I didn't get a good night's sleep? There's a variable in there now that throws in sort of this, this issue. And it's the very fact that I can't effectively speak at what I normally would. Why? Well, I didn't get much sleep. So now I'm emotional in this emotional way, right? Or a thing that it's logical, but in my mind, I can't be logical because I'm tired. You see what I mean? We're sort of affected by these forces that are outside of logic 24-7 that then take away our ability to have the capability and the capacity to be logical all the time. 
Okay, it's a perfect example today. I go out for an outreach program for my church. We go door to door trying to ask anybody if they're in need of help. Now at the surface level, people see this as maybe just a church trying to infringe on their boundaries and their belief systems. But the reality that we Christians look at differently, or hopefully we look at differently, is this is, in all those times you've ever even been to church, sat in the pews, heard a pastor tell you that God loves you, but you've always thought, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Well, this was one of those times where somebody came to the door and was reaching out to you, asking if you need any help, wasn't trying to shove religion down your throat, but because man's twisted ways and trying to distort the perception of religion are embedded in your head before you even answer the door or the doorbell or you see somebody in a church shirt that says to love Jesus or any of the above, our biases immediately kick in and we can't be what? Open to curiosity, which then we lose our capabilities of even accepting the need or perhaps the help, right, that is out there. Anyways. I could have just been very discouraged because we didn't get many people to be as receptive, we didn't get many people to answer their doors. And the reality was that, heck, even the people who had mats that said, I love Jesus or accept Jesus on these, you know, they didn't even answer the doors. Um, we saw one that said, no soliciting, no politics, no something else, and then it said, no religion. And yet, as I was walking up, I saw this cross that was in their yard, which was very interesting to me. Nevertheless, what does that mean? Does that mean I just want to label them as a hypocrite? Does that mean I just want to think something differently about these people? I don't know. Maybe I should just continue to be open because the problem really becomes my, the only problem in my opinion that then is there is my thinking towards the issue at hand. Remove me from a context and there is no problem at all. Same pertains to really any of the problems, I think, in existence, right? If you remove the perception towards the problem, then there is no problem effectively. So then what do we have? Really, the problem is ourselves. A lot of cases, this is us when we even think about God. Most of the things is that God has blessed us since the very beginning of our lives. And we can fall into the ideas of uh, St. Augustine and believing that, you know, you have to be baptized as an infant to receive Jesus. Well, I don't even believe that. I think that's... Two people come together, one is flesh, Holy Spirit's in both of them. They are blessed, so that child then is blessed inside the womb. I mean, hello. But nevertheless, religion has created something out of that itself. So, again, we're blessed since the very beginning of our births. The only person then effectively who could ever tell us that God is not real is ourselves. Jesus has died on a cross for us 2,000 years ago, right? and has already basically said, I love you, and that's an irrevocable love. Whatever you want to think in this life, you think in this life. If you want to, if you want to lean into that love, come here, and the doors you know, are welcome, always. But then again, if you want to reject this love based off of some sort of subjective experience that you've had in this life, then you likewise can do that. But why do that? Why be under judgment with God? Why be under judgment or conviction with your conscience? Why battle good and evil in yourself, right? Many Christians today, in my belief, are battling good and evil in themselves more so than even outside in the external world. It's like 90% of your sort of life is in your mind, in my opinion. 10% of it really is physical. And so then it's your own internal warfare that's going on. Even Paul said something along this line, said, do you not wage war against yourselves? Either that was Paul or that was James, I don't recall. But it says that, yeah, you wage war against yourselves. And this is what creates sort of this hatred on the outside. Well, then what do you expect, right? Get right within yourself, be at peace within yourself, be at peace within the existence of yourself, and you can love others more effectively. Anyways, guys, I hope this was somewhat of a enlightening, insightful, entertaining. <laughs> purposeful conversation we had together this is the honest podcast look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode blessings to all you guys peace